That's the reason I was silent for so many years. I was told not to tell my mother that this was uh, normal and all the other little girls and boys were doing this too. So this was not a, a, a rare thing at all. That was They just didn't talk about it. So I was made to believe that I was sexual, but I wasn't. I hated it. I cried, I had convulsions, but that was totally ignored. She's heartbroken about the life that she lived because of her abuse at the hands of her father and grandfather who were working for Kinsey and sending material to him. Uh, there are others out there like that. Um, Bancroft said he knew there were and he was afraid they were going to show up. He wasn't talking about one pedophile when he said he was afraid that the children of these pedophiles would show up. He was talking about a lot of people who were damaged and he knew it. And the Kinsey Institute knows it and, the, and Indiana University knows it and they've always known it. Kinsey would have done business with the devil if it helped the research and this is true. I view Kinsey as one of the most treasonous Americans in human history. The charge of treason might sound a bit extreme, but the evidence shows that Kinsey's desire to document the most depraved sexual behavior led him to work with a man who seemed to personify evil itself, a Nazi pedophile named Dr. Fritz von Baljusek. Uh, Dr. von Baljusek was a, a Nazi officer, Gestapo, member of the Gestapo, one of the original Nazis, by the way, joined the party very early. Uh, he was in charge of a Polish town, uh, and he was a pedophile. Years after the war, von Baljusek was arrested and put on trial for the murder of a 10-year-old girl who had been found naked and throttled on a piece of wasteland. The German authorities suspected von Baljusek of the crime because the same girl had been listed among several hundred children he had raped, the details of which he had recorded in his pseudo-scientific diaries. The German newspapers called him the most important pedophile in the criminal history of Berlin. During the war, von Baljusek used his authority as a Nazi officer to fulfill his pedophile desires. The full number of children he abused and ultimately murdered is still unknown. When he was arrested, for, uh, po for rape of many, many, many children, but also possible murder of a little girl. All of the German newspapers spoke about this on the headlines. Of, it was in the headlines of every newspaper in Germany. During the war, von Baljusek was the commandant of the Polish town of Jędrzejów. There he threatened the children with certain death if they refused his sexual desires. What he recorded in his diaries of how he treated these children was so criminal that during his trial, the judge cried out, quote, this is no longer human. He had told the children that it was either the smokestacks or it was him. And uh, it turned out that most all the children ended up by, apparently in the smokestacks anyway. Post-World War II, he was highly placed uh, in, uh, in, in civic government, and uh, he was arrested for this uh, possible murder 
um, and being investigated. And in the process, they found that he had been corresponding extensively with Kinsey, that Dr. Kinsey had warned him to be aware and careful of the uh, authorities so he shouldn't get caught. The German authorities learned that von Balusek and Kinsey had a working relationship and that Dr. Kinsey was well aware of the vicious abuse the Nazi pedophile was inflicting upon innocent children. At his trial, the judge said to von Balusek, I got the impression that you got to the children in order to impress Kinsey and to deliver him material. To which von Balusek replied, Kinsey himself asked me for that. The German press was outraged and the, the judge was outraged. The judge went on to say, instead of answering his sordid letters, the strange American scholar should have rather made sure that Mr. von Balusek was put behind bars. The German press reported that Kinsey's letters to the Nazi contained warnings to watch out or be careful of getting caught. They wrote that in his diaries, von Balusek stuck in the letters from the sex researcher Kinsey, in which he'd been encouraged to continue his research. He had also started relationships to expand his researches. One shivers to think of the lengths he went to. At some point, the German authorities tried to get hold of information on von Balusek from the Kinsey Institute. The Kinsey Institute, even though they knew they were dealing with a Nazi and a pedophile, um, when the German authorities wanted, for the purposes of this uh, murder investigation, wanted to get hold of that information, um, the Kinsey Institute refused and Gebhardt said to me and indeed on camera that they would have destroyed any evidence before they handed it over to the police. Paul Gephardt said of this event that the FBI put pressure on Kinsey to reveal the guy's sexual diary. But Kinsey said, absolutely not. Gephardt went on to say, the poor pedophile had his reputation destroyed, finally quit corresponding with us. While German media documented the story heavily, the American press, under the powerful influence of the tax-exempt foundations, gave almost no attention to the story even though Kinsey's research, which had turned the country upside down, was almost certainly based in part on the sexual abuse done by a Nazi pedophile during the Second World War. It is entirely likely that von Balusek's letters to Kinsey can still be found in the records of the Kinsey Institute. Kinsey's willingness to work with the devil, at one point, seemed to take on a very literal meaning. One of the interesting things I found several years ago in researching the Satanist Aleister Crowley uh, was the influence that he has had on so many people here in the United States of America. And one of the men, men that he had influenced was Alfred Kinsey. After publishing his male and female reports, Kinsey began to travel abroad and study sexuality in foreign countries. In his book, Kinsey co-author Wardell Pomeroy wrote that Kinsey went looking for a prized item, the diaries of Aleister Crowley. Crowley died just a year before uh, Kinsey's book came out. Crowley was a famous and highly controversial British occultist in the early part of the 20th century. His sexual exploits in bizarre and sometimes deadly satanic rituals had been exposed in the London newspapers. He also talked about taking a virgin and having sexual relations with her and then upon a climax 
to actually murder her, cut her in six pieces, and put the names of the various demon gods on those six limbs, those six parts of her body. Taking the name for the Antichrist in the Bible, Crowley called himself the Beast 666. His famous saying was, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law by which he justified all forms of immorality. Crowley had a sex temple and had practiced uh, group sex and orgies and what have you and so-called sex magic. Crowley was into pedophilia. He was into uh, justifying his pedophilia. In fact, he had said, let me seduce the boys of England. He wanted to seduce them and he, then he starts talking about sodomy and it being, should be acceptable. So. Uh, I mean, it was quite shocking, especially back then. Pomeroy wrote that Crowley was called by Lord Douglas the wickedest man who ever lived, and his sexual history alone was enough to earn him the title he gloried in, the Beast. Crowley kept a diary up to his death. Two weeks after Kinsey tracked down these papers in England, he found himself in the temple that the Beast had founded in Sicily. Kinsey is pictured here inside Crowley's temple, known as the Abbey Philema, where he performed his satanic rituals. On the wall is a picture of Crowley himself, while across from Kinsey is another man named Kenneth Anger. Anger was a close acquaintance who appeared in some of Kinsey's sex films, made in the attic of his Bloomington home. As an avant-garde filmmaker, Anger was deeply involved in the occult. He directed films with titles such as Lucifer Rising and The Invocation of My Demon Brother. Kenneth Anger uh, is a co-founder of uh, Anton LaVey's Church of Satan. And Kenneth Anger uh, also was, you know, had a penchant for younger men, for sure. Bobby Beausoleil was his living boyfriend. That's the same Bobby Beausoleil that committed the first m murder, uh, killing him and for uh, Charles Manson. That was his living boyfriend. He played Lucifer in one of his uh, occult uh, movies that extolled the virtues of Aleister Crowley's magic and what have you. In this image from one of Anger's films, we see Bobby Beausoleil, who would later become one of Charles Manson's killers. He's standing next to a doorway with Crowley's maxim, do what thou wilt, painted on the door. A phrase that certainly fit with Kinsey's own view of human sexuality. Pomeroy even admits that, that Kinsey uh, loved uh, Crowley's writings, including uh, specifically mentioning some of his homosexual erotica, uh, one of his books called White Stains. Kenneth Anger is quoted saying that Kinsey was obsessed with obtaining the Great Beast's day-to-day sex diaries. To obtain grant monies and maintain the support of the university, Kinsey needed the excuse of research to validate his 24 hours a day obsession with sex. However, Kinsey's battle cry of do your best and let other people react as they will seemed a variation on Crowley's do what thou wilt maxim. An older Kenneth Anger is pictured here with the name Lucifer tattooed on his chest. So important was Anger's relationship with Kinsey that to this day, the Kinsey Institute Library features a Kenneth Anger collection with an archive of Anger's films as well as the correspondence between him and Alfred Kinsey. Should America be disturbed that the father of her sexual revolution who changed American law and laid the foundation for sex education had such associations? If America continues to be influenced by Kinsey, what will it mean for her future? What Kinsey discovered at Crowley's mysterious abbey might provide a clue. Pomeroy writes that Crowley's curious magnetism drew people from all over the world who came and became his sexual slaves. Some of these women left their husbands to enter the temple. They held group orgies as part of their ritual and included in them the small children the women had brought. He further reveals that inside the abbey, Kinsey found paintings, life-sized representations of sexual activity, including children. 
Some have considered the possibility that a Lester Crowley was another of Kinsey's pedophiles who kept his diaries as part of Kinsey's sex research. I would be surprised if Kinsey uh, was not, in fact, either paying or communicating with Crowley regarding his sex diaries because Crowley was more open and more public with his sexual exploits than pretty much anybody of the time. He was known as the wickedest man on the earth long before uh, Kinsey would have gone to him. He was far more uh, accessible than, say, a Nazi officer in Germany uh, to Kinsey. And, and as, as ugly as Crowley was to so many people, uh, he wasn't nearly as known or, or there wasn't the reputation that there was with the Nazis. And at the same time, Crowley uh, could have used the money in the 1940s. He had, uh, you know, he wasn't as rich as he was. He had spent a lot of his money, so he would have been more open to that. And then to see that Kinsey was actually reading Crowley's stuff, we know that from Pomeroy. And it would be hard to believe that he wasn't already working with Crowley and encouraging Crowley to continue on with his sexual exploits. One way or another, the, the net effect is the same. Kinsey was fostering much of the same revolution that Crowley had begun over in England and was helping continue what Crowley hoped would take place in the United States of America. Mass media seems to have always been on the side of Kinsey and his philosophy. A philosophy carried out by Hugh Hefner in 1953 when he launched Playboy magazine. That same year, Kinsey released his K-Bomb, Sexual Behavior in the Human Female, the second book in his report on human sexuality. Hefner made an immediate association between his soft porn magazine and Kinsey's research. I referred to it in the first introduction to the first issue and called it the other great book that was coming out in 1953. Max Lerner, uh, the historian and, and a good friend of mine, said that uh, Kinsey was the researcher and I was the pamphleteer. And uh, it's an interesting way of looking at it. I certainly do think that in a very real way the sexual revolution began in 1953, you know, with the second book and the beginning of Playboy. Hugh Hefner had been under the influence of Kinseyan philosophy since the release of the male volume in 1948. He had even written about it in a college publication years before he started Playboy magazine. Half a century later, in Playboy's 50th anniversary issue, Hefner paid special tribute to Alfred Kinsey, celebrating the man who had helped him launched the sexual revolution. But Playboy represented more than just nude photos of the girl next door. According to Hefner, the magazine was, quote, a statement of rebellion without question. The first official Playboy playmate was named Janet Pilgrim, directly intended to mock America's Puritan heritage. In time, Hefner would publish the Playboy philosophy, a new morality for the post-Kinsey era. Just as Kinsey had gone all over the country preaching the message of sexual reform, Hefner followed his example, giving speeches, appearing on talk shows, and speaking in public forums as the pamphleteer for Kinsey's sexual revolution. So what you're saying, Mr. Hefner, is that, is that we should encourage premarital sexual relations? I think that we should encourage the notion that uh, sex can be uh, right and proper in marriage or out of marriage. In time, Hefner set up the Playboy Foundation, which became, quote, one of the major sources of income for the Kinsey Institute. But was Hefner's sexual revolution simply about giving consenting adults the right to alternative lifestyles? Or was there a hidden agenda within the pages of Playboy, one that would further the child sexual abuse also found in the Kinsey reports? In 1983, Dr. Judith Reisman was appointed by the Juvenile Division of the Department of Justice to investigate the images in Playboy, along with Penthouse and Hustler magazines. The reason for the study was due to the rise of violent sex crimes committed by young adults against even younger children. 
Those who were committing these crimes were often found to have copies of Playboy,